Good afternoon. Uh, uh, I would like to thank the Vatikuti Foundation for the invitation. And my talk is on uh, our experience on robotic arm assisted uh, total knee replacement uh, from Amrita Institute, Cochin. So our story goes like this. Uh, we, about four or five years back, uh, our institute got this uh, Da Vinci robot for the uh, gastro uh, gynecology, CVTS, and urology departments. And they were doing very well. And then they got the Rosa robot for the uh, neurosurgery department. And uh, management was pretty impressed with the way the, those departments were doing. And then they asked us whether orthopedics need one. So we were kind of taken aback because we didn't know much about robotics at that time. We did have navigation brain lab with us. But uh, again, uh, when uh, robot came into play, then this was one of the robot which was there in the market. I think it came way back in 2006. I think uh, the macro robot was first introduced. And over the years, they have modified. And the current generation, the third generation, I believe, uh, was available in 2015. So started with the uni, then total hip, and currently in 2016 they have, received, uh, they have released the total knee uh, usage of this particular machine. And this was the one which the management got us in 2017, but we started the program sometime in 2018, and uh, till now we probably might have done maybe about 100, more than 100 cases. And uh, we, we were uh, kind of, bit impressed with the whole thing. Maybe I'll uh, share my experience with you. So we all know, like as the previous uh, speakers said, uh, the registries throughout the world have shown that the revision rate uh, of our regular joint replacements are slowly going up. And, the, and it's the same scenario in India, too. We are facing with a lot and lot of revisions. And in our Indian patients, it's pretty difficult to manage them because the main reason being the financial reasons, and they are kind of, uh, it, it's a difficult scenario altogether to do revision cases. So if you get it right the first time, I think that would be the best. And uh, whichever conferences you go, you always hear this magic uh, number, 20% of our patients, especially total knee, re uh, total knee replacement patients, are unhappy. So if we can correct those 20%, again, uh, I think that should be the aim what we as surgeons should be aiming for. And uh, uh, we know uh, many patients do get uh, operated relatively in the young age group, and the failure mode are, are also slowly changing. It's not just infection. There are other causes for failure. And uh, these are the things we should be uh, trying, to, uh, uh, trying to tackle in future. So recently, in uh, this month, I was in Cleveland for the CCJR meeting, and uh, I could see that at least in uh, three of the major companies' uh, stalls, there were three robots. So it was uh, pretty impressive that most of these major players are concentra concentrating on this robotic technology. Maybe that might be the fashion in the coming years. Uh, we have to carefully watch and see how things are going in the coming years. And also, there was a live surgery for, uh, on that in, the, in this conference by Michael Ast uh, on this macro robotic uh, uh, knee replacement, uh, which went off very well. So here, uh, here we have a scenario where uh, this macro robot, which has more than 10 years of uh, been in the market, and also a good implant, which is a relatively good uh, track record. And they have combined these together and given us a product where we can do an enhanced planning uh, for a total knee replacement. Most of us do a lot of planning for our total hip replacements, but very little if it's a straightforward knee replacement. But this enhanced planning do help us a lot. And also, you can do a dynamic joint balancing. That is, intraoperatively and preoperatively, you can balance the knee with accurate numbers which are shown in the monitor. And uh, much more important of all this is the robotic arm-assisted bone preparation, which is uh, really nice, which, which is one of the best things I think uh, this robot can give us, which I feel may be really, really important, because I think this is one robot which can give you a re real precise cut. Even if you cut more or less, it really tells you what, what is happening for that bone. When you do a macro planning, you have to have a 3D CT taken, because it's a CT-based robotic machine. And uh, preoperatively, you can sit and plan with the 3D reconstructed bone model and fit an implant for, the, uh, for that particular anatomy of that uh, patient. And you can adjust the implant in such a way that you have about six degrees of freedom, freedom whether it is a varus or a valgus flexion, extension, or rotation. And you can plan your implant in such a good way before even you start your bone cuts. Also, you can mark your um, 
uh, cortices and make sure the implant is really sitting on exactly where you want to. And uh, all these are to a large extent helpful if you have a CT image uh, for, so, that, so that you can plan much better. And when you come to the dynamic joint balancing, it's a real-time dynamic assessment where you can look at the gap balance both in flexion and extension. And it's a surgeon-controlled intraoperative adjustment. You can fine-tune the implants and make your cuts in such a way that you can balance both those gaps, both in flexion and extension to a large extent, which give you precise values. So this is how you look at uh, both in uh, flexion and extension. You can see the uh, values uh, on either side, how is the medial side and the lateral side, whether you have to rotate the implant or you have to uh, make extra bone cuts to get that balance right. So it takes a bit of time than normal, but uh, at least you get a good alignment towards the end of it. You start your surgery just like I think most of you would have uh, will be familiar with the navigation system. It's almost similar to that. Uh, similar to that. You have arrays, you have pointers, you uh, register the bones, and the registered bone is kind of the robot matches it to the CT scan values, which is already fed into the computer. And then the robotic arm helps you in uh, making precise cuts. So this this is. Uh, I think the strong point of this particular system because it's uh, it's a very precise thing, and uh, uh, it it has got a haptic bound, uh, boundary. What we mean by this is that uh, there is a boundary in which the saw goes and cuts the bone. The amount of bone which has to be resected is color coded so that you know exactly how much bone has to be taken. And if you take extra bone, it shows a different color, red color, that you have taken a little more. But uh, to a large extent, the robotic arm guides you uh, to take the exact bone what is needed. And also, uh, the saw blade is not allowed to go beyond the boundaries so that the amount of soft tissue damage uh, you can make uh, is uh, very much uh, limited in this particular system. And uh, to some extent, if you don't make too much of a soft tissue damage, probably the inflammation and the pain postoperatively is much less. And that's what uh, these people claim, that uh, the pain is much less and the patient can be rehabilitated faster and discharged faster from the hospital. So ultimately, you get a result what you have aimed for, and uh, it, it's pretty impressive. So when we started our program in 2017-18 uh, uh, onwards, uh, we looked at our initial 30 cases and uh, tried to draw some lines and see whether are we really getting what, what is all claimed by uh, the companies, because we surgeons were very much in the learning curve. So we looked at our initial 30 cases, compared it with the equal number of uh, conventional TKRs, and we looked, uh, the overall value looked relatively similar, but when we uh, really started splitting uh, hairs, we, look, we uh, uh, split it into excellent, acceptable and outliers, depending upon that three degree value. We found that most of the excellent values were in the robotic, especially in the mechanical axis. We also looked at the femoral component, the coronal inclination. Again, it was much better on the robotic side which was kind of statistically significant. On the tibial side, we looked at the coronal. Again, when you look at the excellent pattern, those uh, numbers were better on the robotic side com uh, compared to the conventional. When we looked at the sagittal inclination of the femoral component with whatever X-ray we had, because it was not a long, a long film, but a short film, again, with the conventional and the robotic, the robotic did have better values which, again, on the tibial coronal axis, again, not statistically significant. Our numbers were little, but again, it uh, overall value looked better. And when we looked at the literature, again, the robotic did give a, a better mechanical alignment compared to the conventional, which was almost similar to other papers out there. And in conclusion, we found that probably the robot was giving us better values, at least in the initial x-rays, what we look at, even though clinical data will take a long time, but at least in the x-ray wise, it was showing, it was giving us a much, much uh, better values compared to a, a conventional total knee replacement. Thank you very much.